Our next talk comes from Bavi and is going to be talking about an empowering and awesome journey with disability in the Ubuntu community. Thank you. Thank you. So, good morning, all. Uh, basically, yeah, I'm an Indian and uh, I stay in Budapest right now. So, I'm going to talk about uh, how uh, how I came over my disability and uh, speech problems, thanks to the Ubuntu and Debian community, for, for which I'm contributing from the past uh, 50 years. So, basically, like. I was born with 75% uh, cerebral palsy. Like, uh, <laughs> right now it's so bad that my left, le left leg and left hand doesn't move. So any contributions I make in the Ubuntu community or any code I do is with a single hand. Yeah, so I just wanted to give an overview about uh, how this community, the Ubuntu community and Debian community actually helped me to overcome all my challenges and see a world in a better perspective. So something about me, like uh, I'm an Ubuntu user from 6.04, but even earlier, and I got my Ubuntu membership in 2007, which was a real long time ago. And I, yeah. I started contributing to the Ubuntu development uh, community, like packaging and maintaining packages. And I got uh, my repository access in 2010. And I was on the application review board, which was like the predecessor to the snaps which you have. Like we were one of the main reasons for which you have snaps today. I'll come to that part later. It's like how one, uh, decision in uh, uh, last two years actually triggered this entire snap thing. And I was on the uh, Ubuntu local community council until 2015. And right now, I'm a private entrepreneur in Budapest, Hungary, working with uh, angel investors and venture capitalists on advising them technically all uh, early stage startup investment and how to go about things. So that's about me. And let's get into it. Like, so uh, <clears throat> the first thing is like when I started uh, uh, using Ubuntu in 2004, like uh, I was in a virtually on a wheelchair and it was uh, like I was in a box, uh, like how, how to come out of the uh, four walls I am in right now. So then I started uh, exploring uh, open source, and then I uh, and then I got introduced to Ubuntu through uh, Shipit. Anyone remember Shipit here? <laughs> like it's really old time. Like it's like uh, yeah, ten years ago the program got. Uh, disbanded. So the first thing I did was uh, order a few stupid CDs of uh, Ubuntu and try to install it. Like at those days, everything was like sort of manual, like from partition to uh, mounting a disk to uh, your driver installations, etc. Everything was manual. So I tried to figure it out. I failed like around uh, four, six months. I was like, what the heck, man? Like, the, uh, this is this is not what I expected. And then I slowly started getting involved in the IRC and the forums. So I started lurking around. And once I got a grip, I started contributing to the forums first. And then after the forums, when I saw the Ubuntu development uh, ecosystem, like I was really interested. Like, uh, why cannot I contribute to this? So from then onwards, I started uh, box squashing and uh, uh, Ubuntu development and package maintenance. So it's like, uh, the thing is, why the Ubuntu community is so great and so helpful is, 
you welcome people from all sorts of uh, backgrounds like it's uh, it's mean diversity means in corporate culture it's like only you targeted to some some part of a group or some community but in the ubuntu community as mark said the other day uh, uh the community welcomes everyone with open heart like i had serious accessibility issues and even today even at present i have serious speech issues like i stammer a lot so i have a thick accent so uh, so apart from uh, in spite of that i am uh, i am actually talking here like my brain doesn't my uh, one part of the brain which processes my speech and my creative side of it is grossly underdeveloped so i cannot actually <laughs> sort of articulate things in a better manner but i'm still standing here thanks to the ubuntu community and uh, yeah uh, th th thanks to uds also like from past uh, 10 years this is the this is the uds uh, this is the summit uh, which is equal to the uds but it's like uh, some sort of different and we had a great time in uds actually 10 years ago so the question i uh, question i see in the board also right outside it's like how to get involved in packaging or maintenance and um, some of them has written that how to get involved in loco teams and uh, how to get women into ubuntu community the thing is uh, for starting a contribution in the ubuntu community you need to just ask any one of them and they'll be happy to guide you like uh, where to go and where to find out things and uh, it's pretty simple you need not to you need not to uh, have a pre uh, seclusion mind that okay this is only for development or this is only for uh, juju or this is only for arm we need documentation without documentation any software doesn't even sustain for a long time for example we need translations we need support forums so these are the uh, some of the areas where like uh, non technical contributions also come into the picture including advocacy like we need the people who are motivated enough uh, to take care of the uh, loco loco teams for example it's it's grossly outdated and i still have the access <laughs> in spite of being out of the team from past 6 uh, years i still have the access and uh, if anyone helps me out in uh, re resurrecting the loco teams and uh, the processes which uh, govern the loco teams i'll be more than happy to help them out in the right direction so if you, uh, if anyone wants to start contributing to the ubuntu community the right uh, the the basic thing is taking small steps in the ubuntu community and uh, <clears throat> one more thing is like when they ask uh, when they ask me about uh, packaging and maintenance i'll tell you a simple example okay so uh, any dds here who are debian developers who are sitting here aha uh -huh. so it's like uh, it's like the thing is um, when you try to explain uh, let's say quilt quilt patch management system or a uh, system where uh, we are using p builder or s build to build our packages and d put to push our packages to the ubuntu or the db in repository to a to a github guy who is like uh, who knows git merge git pull and uh, who knows uh, building continuous integration or gel kills it's a real tough task because it's a whole new whole new environment like when i started ubuntu uh, when i started contributing in the ubuntu development right we had a simple like sort of a patch system wherein uh we used to run a patch command and put the level of the directory and the level of the file which needs to be patched and write few lines of code and push it 
and boom, it was there. So then we had uh, something called as D-patch, which was again good, which was the predecessor for the quilt. Uh, I don't know whether uh, quilt is still the gold standard for patching uh, uh, packages in Ubuntu, uh, as I've lost, uh, lost touching the Ubuntu or the Debian development from 2018. My last upload came in 2019. So, like D patch had a problem, like when you when you uh, patch the patch uh, pa patch any system or whatever patch any file or upload patches, uh, they needed to be numbered, and once the number gets wrong, the patch series wouldn't apply properly. So then uh, we got something known as Quilt, which is uh, like uh, a self patch management system where you, wherein you have a you have a file called series uh, where you can uh, where you can uh, you can include your patch and include the file name in the patch and then uh, they just run the quilt run command and it'll just patch the system so explaining this thing or explaining the upstream or downstream delta to a github guy is a real tough task because it's uh, it's a whole new different environment altogether so that's why uh, the shift has come from, uh, let's say, to the core package management to a more sort of uh, app development right now using Slabs. And that too, uh, as a previous application review board member, uh, in 2012, we had a, we had a community event called uh, Ubuntu App Showdown, wherein we had around uh, 35 apps coming in as entries, and I was one of the judges on the panel. So we had around uh, one month of uh, development efforts. So we, uh, we were a four-member four team, actually. And then what we did was we needed to strip it down to three, uh, three, three apps. And the problem was all the 35 apps which Kvil were seriously good at that point of time. So, what we did was, we thought of uh, introducing a uh, system, uh, system like Debian, uh, Debian package management for the app review system in Ubuntu. And then when I started uh, looking into uh, porting Lintian, uh, Lintian into the app review system in Ubuntu, like I, co I collaborated with the Debian Lintian maintainers and they were like, oh man, this is cool and uh, uh, this seems to be a great idea. But after somewhere around 60 commits or something, I realized that, oh man, I'm in deep waters now because this, uh, this part particular code which checks the Debian packaging standard is like a deep, deep sea. So then uh, it got to a point where like it was heavily sort of difficult to maintain the entire thing. So then what we decided in the community was to automate the entire process using a git flow or something, and that's how Slabs gave it to picture. So uh, the thing is, we were right there when uh, we took a decision like to change over from the DBN, DBNized system of app reviews to the system of app reviews, which is right now present as Snaps. So, how to how to get help? So when you, when uh, when, uh, when you see uh, someone say, saying, "Hey, how how can I get help?" So how many people are new here, like new to Ubuntu? Uh, okay. So, uh, so the thing is, one golden rule is to just ask nobody nobody tells you read the manual well nobody tells you that to read the manual and shut, uh, shut up and do your own work here that the community is such a way that it's quite open and if you tap on anyone's shoulder and ask kiriti they will be ready to help you that's what the ubuntu community and the core sort of uh, uh, mantra is in the entire community so if you need anything, 
or if any newcomers here need anything, just reach out to the Ubuntu community, the old ones like we, or the new ones, and they'll be really happy to help. So, ah, so, how to get this thing uh, like uh, st uh, started? Like, for example, we had outreach teams and beginners teams before who were like uh, getting the new contributors into the Ubuntu community and uh, having all the having uh, having them go through the processes. But right now, it's uh, the a good thing which has happened is the Ubuntu accomplishments have been re, uh, regenerated completely thanks to Denny. And uh, uh, one thing is, I'm thinking like, ca can we merge the outreach thing and the Ubuntu accomplishments thing to create something like a GitHub AWA, something on the similar lines. So it's just, a, it's just an idea and um, hopefully if, uh, if, uh, if I get some support in the Ubuntu community, I hope to restructure the local teams first and the local console and then have a talk uh, about how, how, how I did this thing at the present in the next Ubuntu Summit. So apart from that, uh, I am actually into machine learning and uh, AI and uh, I was one of the mentors for the Google Summer of Code in 2013 where myself and my mentee uh, did some development on automatic voice translation for Indian languages which was not present in Google Translate and right now it's a part of Google Translate. Any Google guys here? Yeah, so uh, uh, so the thing is, this community has helped me to go to San Francisco, to go to different parts of the world, and uh, contribute to different sort of stacks. Like, and um, one more thing is, the other picture is, uh, I represented uh, India at the United Nations Conference on uh, disability policies for uh, IT in uh, corporate world and uh, I got a silver medal from the United Nations for my presentation on uh, how to accommodate differently abled people uh, in the corporate environment, like uh, how to implement a DEI strat strategy for corporate environment in 2013. And the second picture is like due to my contributions to the open source and the disability community in India. I got a order of merit from the Honorable President of India in 2017. So after that, I moved my base permanently to Europe and uh, I'm, a, I'm a private entrepreneur now who is consulting on different projects and I'm looking out for more work also. Yeah. So this is my story in the Ubuntu community from being nowhere and even now, I needed support from, from two guys to get up on the stage. Like, uh, I should thank Carlos for helping me out. Like, he was, he was, he's a, he was a rock star. And, and Moro for helping me out, for literally lifting me up and getting me on the stage. So thanks to both of them. And yeah, that's it. This is my story. Like from the past 15 years. And uh, for me, Ubuntu has become a way of life. Ubuntu and DBN has become a way of life daily. And I hope to continue. And I hope to continue giving back to the community as far as I can. Thank you. So. So if there is any questions, there is five minutes remaining, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Hi, thanks very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Um, you've told us about your story, and 
you're one of the few who gets on the stage um, and manages to tell that story. Um, can you suggest what we should be thinking about in order to make sure that there are more people who can get on the stage who need a bit of help getting there? And when I say get on the stage, I mean getting into work or just participating in communities. Uh -huh. Right now, I'm working on a side project uh, wherein I want to uh, develop an ecosystem wherein people like me can come into open source and can use technology and be independent like me. So I'm working on it right now and, the, uh, and uh, it's my dream actually in the next few years to do it. Like, if I can do this, anyone can do this. That's my belief. Oh, I'll follow okay. up with that, if I may. Um, uh, can you say what the biggest single concrete difference was for you in, in, in your journey? What was the single thing that made a difference in a concrete way? A single thing which made a difference was the confidence that the community gave. I, I have worked with uh, great minds in the community, like one of them is my friend, Fenris from Malaysia, who is like, who is a rock star and he is uh, on the Ubuntu membership board. And the other one is uh, Ose. Ose is here. And uh, I've, I've worked with uh, many people like uh, Daniel Holbach, who was like, who was my mentor in uh, all these Ubuntu development things. So uh, I worked with him for 800 patches or 800 packages. He was like, even a single mistake, he used to say, okay, you can do it, redo it. So the confidence the community gave was the biggest differentiator for me to come here. Okay. Hi. Um, so uh, how can we find that project that you said you are working on? And uh, what do you believe that local communities uh, can do to, to enable it further and uh, take it everywhere. Uh, right now, uh, local communities are a bit of on the backstage. So if I get uh, some support, I can rejig the entire thing. And uh, basically, uh, for me, local communities are like the backbone of the Ubuntu ecosystem. Like wherever you go, if you have local events, you can get more people coming in and with different sort of ideas to contribute to take this thing forward. So on the local council, which is like, let's say, like very sort of dead right now, if I get some support, I can rejig the local system entirely again. Hi, thanks for the nice presentation. I would like to ask you a piece of advice for Ubuntu developers. How could we help uh, other people that face situations like you faced before that you thought that were roadblocks in, in your way of contributing, getting involved, or could prevent happening for, for others? Um, just, be, just be open and just be inclusive, like Mark said. Uh, it it's all depends on the accessibility part. So if you make things accessible, and if you are open-hearted, then everything is possible. So thank you, guys. Thank you for listening to me. And I'm around here. If you need anything, please um, type me, and I'll be in conversation with you. Thank you. <laughs>